hello welcome to this tutorial and today we are going to create an octagonal church building using one special tool called a polar array i'm Maurice dimba and let's get started right away if you take a look on the screen we are in part three of our octagonal grid creation and today we, we are going to create uh, a building using the same grid that we created before and this is a part three of that and if you take a look, if you uh, bring this closer, you, you'll be able to see some some columns, some some higher, some shorter, and one at the central. As you go, you'll find you'll see the purposes of these uh, of these columns. Now, let me bring this close. You can see s some markings. They are red, red, and red. There are some uh, some points. Now I'll go. St I'll get started by placing my rafter at this far end here. I'll come to steel here, and I'll come to steel beam there, and I'll pick my point from that spot. Wrong location. Now I'll come to beam, and I'll snap at that spot, and stretch all the way to this far end, and I'll place my rafter there. Once I've done that. I'm going to navigate and try to turn this round using a mouse by pressing my left button on the mouse and hold and just move your mouse like this you'll be able to see to see and turn around your model smoothly headache free now let's bring it close and I want to create a connection between this column and this beam and where do we find those uh, uh, macros that will help us in creating these haunches or haunch in between uh, uh, to create a connection between the, the rafter and the column it's simple you come to applications and component here click that button and in here first of all go straight to haunch just type haunch you'll be prompted with the uh, many macros that start with the same word uh, as you proceed to narrow down on a particular one the choices get narrowed to a particular choice of, of you you might be look you might be looking for now I'll finish my word haunch now we have apex hunch here of the feet we have the raid eaves hunch now we are going to work with this one just double click on it to access uh, its dialog box in here just click under that and fortunately enough we have a preset or a preset connection that we did previously so i'll just use that i'll go ahead and click load that and click modify apply and accept to activate it now i'm going to connect this column and that a rafter and give it some time to create a connection right there and we have a connection in place already created i'll right click and redraw to remove those symbols or a symbol that indicates uh, an active macro so we've created a hunch here for our uh, between our column and the rafter now we want to co connect this or we want to bolt this rafter to this column again once again what we're going to do we are going to use a different haunch and here we are going to use an end plate with the, with the stiffener we just type here end plate just type here end plate and we look for an end plate maybe 144 can work better for us just double click on, on that and uh, once again we're lucky enough we can have we have a variety of presets here so if i scroll down i'll be able to pick one i'll be able to pick either that and load the settings right there and click modify apply and accept that to activate our settings now i'll go, i want to connect this to this and give it some time to connect i'll right click and come to redraw to remove all those uh, active macro symbols so this is how this will be connected though we need some stiffeners there but j this is just an overview on how to use this tool uh a polari tool on how uh, on how you can quicken your modeling and detailing of your model now we want to bring we want to pull this we want to pull this rafter here because this uh, this uh, the sloping angle must be the same all the way from the pitch of our roof here now i'm going to pick on this so to pick on this I'll, I'll 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 bring it so close so that i pick it from an accurate position so i'll select the rafter here i'll select on it then right click and come to special copy and prior to doing that i need to deactivate the assembly button in this case it is already deactivated reason being i don't want to carry 
a, a whole assembly of an unwanted members now i'll come here and click copy then uh, zoom close to pick a position where i intend to pick it from and connect it to the other column now i've picked it and i want to connect it to this top end here i'll connect it right there i'll right click and click re interrupt to get rid of that uh, active macro i'll write a read road remove those symbols and this this where we are now you can see our rafter in place this our rafter and now we we want to create another member prior to using our special tool called polar array it's very important tool it it, it, it quickens and it makes work simple for you i'll come to to uh, beam here and prior to using the beam or activating my beam command i want to define the length or the height i intend to go so i'll click i'll click on this uh, 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 point right click and come to special copy here and click linear and i want to copy it up by uh, 2.5 meters just type 2.5 right there and click ok so i want to copy it all the way to that spot now i'll come to beam and i'll snap on that spot and move all the way to that spot if i come to view come to navigate you can see it's taking a wrong direction this sh should be modified to match the, the direction of our rafter so what do we do what we can do just double click on it to access the column uh, the beam properties of this so what we're going to do just click 90 to change that angle and see whether that will will, will work then uh, undo that that might not work we'll prefix that by 90 and see that if that will not that one will not work and finally use 45 45 will not work then 180 will work for us it's not working for us and what we're going to do just undo it and do undo that and come here come here and rotate that and it must work uh, we want we'll go step by step till it works for it to, to work for us now i'll come to 45 and try to turn that round and that that th this one is going to work and uh, what we're going to, to, to change is just the position here we'll bring it to right and click okay now in here we are going to come to navigate and turn that round and try to bring it at the midpoint right there and click okay that one will be okay so the way it is it's much better so we are we are going to connect this we'll come to we'll, we'll remove that beam properties uh, dialog box will come back to applications and component here to access other macros so we want to create a connection between this and this and we either use bolted or weld so a weld will take us slightly faster so i'll introduce this uh, crank uh, cranked beam I'll want to connect that to that so we have that connected I'll right click and redraw and again I want to create I want to create a beam that will move all the way from this end to that end and it must the slope must be the same I repeat that I'll come again to uh, steel and pick on beam and I'll snap right at the mid center here and snap right here perfect and i'll come to view and try to rotate this so that we have we take a look from the distance we've we've reached so far and i want to create a hunch between this and that i'll come back to hunch hunch i'll pick on the eve hunch and i want to connect this to that we have our eve hunch in place so this this is what we have so so far this is how far we've gone and we are we are reaching the pitch so on reaching the pitch we have a cylindrical 
member here, cylindrical column, and this has, has come all the way from the zero level here. So I'm going to double click on this and show you how you can create this right on the top here. So if I double click on this, you can see the, the, the total height of this of this member is 15.9 meters high. So it's off the ground by 15.3 by 15.3. So if I bring if I bring it back to zero, if I bring this back to zero, you can see how it looks. It, it goes all the way to the bottom end, but I've reduced that height to 15. I've, I've reduced that height to 15.3. So this is where we are and uh, I've shortened it like that. So uh, we need a connection here that will be connecting this rafter to this uh, 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 circular hollow section at the top here that will help us in creating the pitch. Now I'll come to steel beam once again. I'll come to beam right there and snap on that spot and try and connect with this. This is how it looks and try and come to view and, and uh, turn that does it look much better not really and what we are going to do is try if you can create a connection here i'll come to splice i'll come to splice here just type splice Pl splice and um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pick on the best on the on the best one Lem let me pick on this and try pick on that scroll down and try to pick on the best splice column splice is this one much better no we can we can try this we can load that and uh, we come here and try to connect this and that and that one is not the best way to do it now I'll scroll once again down and try to pick a better one so I'll come up here. I'll come up here and try to pick one uh, splice connection. Double click on that and scroll down and try connect that and that. That is not working out for us. So I'll try and delete this and try and get rid of this. Get rid of this by deleting it. So I'm going to I'm going to click on this right click and prior to doing that I'm going to change my XYZ plane I'll pick on the work, work plane tool and uh, reorient my work plane tool by placing on uh, placing it on top of this rafter I'll click interrupt so I want to copy this I want to give an offset of this point to a point near this member so I'll right click and come to special copy here and click linear and uh, change this to zero the axis to zero and I'll, I'll be working with the x-axis and prior to doing that make sure your xyz axis is in the right position so that you don't copy this point to a wrong position now I'll come to x-axis here and I'll feed 500 if I think it's 500 and prefix this by a negative sign because we are moving off the direction in the opposite direction of the, of x-axis now I'll go ahead and click copy and there we are I have I have my point in the exact position we intended it to be on I'll come to steel here and pick on beam and I'll try to uh, create a member here and that is the is the point we intended it to be on so if you take a look there's a, a good connection right there so let's try and create a connection here and prior to creating a connection let's take our XYZ plane to a default position where it belongs. I'll come to work plane tool and pick on the work plane tool plane uh, right there and try to place this on a default position. Maybe you can place it at the center right there. So I'd come on top here and uh, try and invoke this uh, splice, splice connection. Pick on the splice connection, try to create to create a connection right here. There's a, there's a, a, a connection has been created and we'll try to make it much better right click and redraw and double click on it right here by removing that we get rid of any uh, obstacle or uh, anything blocking us from accessing or viewing our model uh, properly now we have flange bolts we have web bolts uh, web bolts and flange bolts so we want to adjust this Maybe we want four of these at that distance, which is a lot. 
a lot of balls and it's, uh, that's absolute wastage of material bring it that close that's still absolute wastage and we can change this we can change this we can change this to we can we need only three balls and that's position and that uh, that's still a lot we can bring to two and click ok that's ok and what what do we do we want to adjust this maybe to three change that to three and change center to center distances and add four of them four of them as long as we uh, as long as we don't hit that far end our bolts are clashing and we need to readjust this so i'm going to double click on that and try to change this maybe to 95 and that i think will match will work much better for us first of all let me enable that double click on that and try to change this to 95 i think will work much better for us my bolt doesn't clash at all now we'll come to flanges we are off the web now we want one side to be welded and one side to be bolted so that we, we uh, the connection can be done uh, the assembly can be done easily on the side because uh, fixing this pitch to, uh, uh, this far end the pitch here is very hectic and uh, it needs some creativity to place it accurately in that position so what you're going to do we want to detach one side to be welded and one side to be bolted on site so we double click on that side and we will come to pictures here and pick that option one side to be welded so I'll click that so you can see at the bottom end here we'll have this one welded welded on uh, welded on the workshop and at uh, the same time this p uh, this pitch end be assembled on site so this side also we can have the same option here we weld that this one this far end is welded so uh the rafter part will be bolted on site so that's how it will work for us in this in this particular case so what we're going to do we'll just save this particular sec uh, connection we'll come here and type a uh, connection uh, splice one yes type splice one splice one or splice two go ahead and click save us we want to save this connection because there's some there's a step you want to jump we want to move uh, and we want to get rid of this connection prior to coming to it later on because if you if you if you apply it in that step it will bring a clashing it will clash or it, will, it might not work so let's save save this connection first i've clicked save us i'll click load and save so i'll click modify apply and accept that so if you double click on it once again and come to standard here it's among of our choices here so whenever we need it we can pick on or we can pick on it at any time now i'll get rid of it and please note that we have that in particular in in particular not the number this uh, column splice 132 so just type 132 or column splice i'll get rid of this now so what i'm going to do here very simple i want to populate this i want to populate this i, I need eight of this around this uh, cylindrical member or chs so i'm going to do one simple thing um, I'll come to po uh, to this end. I'm I'm trying to look for a polar array tool, polar array tool, uh, which is this one. I'll double click on it. I'll double click on it, and remember our our polar array settings must be the same with these columns. So let's try and try. Let, let's try and check whether it, the settings will match. Let's double click on it, and these are the settings. So to apply this make sure you you apply you click modify apply and accept to make these settings a default so we can apply them on top here so i'll come back to polar array tool double click and we have the same settings here so we are going to apply the same so that our rafters will be matching so that to, to enable our our, raft, our rafters to match this this uh, pitch and connection so what what am i talking about i want to select on this member after after invoking this tool here and do it once again double click and pick on the part you want to up uh, want to populate i want to populate this i'll once i've picked on it i'll press my middle button in the mouse and i want to pick this far end here as my 
as my as my point i'll snap right there as my first point and i'll go all the way to this far end here and snap right here as my second point and i'll move all the way to this end and snap here as my third point here right there so i right click and click interrupt and try to come here and check whether this has been populated everything is in place i'll click ok and i'll come to navigate and check this this has been populated and how many are they i think there are eight we have one two three four you can disable this so that you can mouse over them one two three four five six seven eight i think they're eight they should be eight the eight one two three four five six seven eight so we have those at the top end there so what do we do with this we first of all we need to weld them to this member let's check if we have a duplication of any member none at all we have all these members no duplication of any member so i'll come here once again and click weld and, and uh, click weld weld i'll pick on stanchion stanchion will not work i'll tie i'll use tube because that is a tube i'll use this this one will work much better for us so i want to weld the, i want to weld this to that wrong process that's why you're hearing the bell i want to weld this to that and that has been welded uh, if i come here you can be able to see there's a connection right there So if I weld this to this and check whether a welding has been created, not, not good, not good, not good. Let me try and pick on this. Pick on that. We've lost everything. Let me get rid. Let me uh, disable that and try to delete that. Everything disappears. And uh, let me come back and let me come to navigate and try to rotate this and this is what we have and let's move for, let's move ahead we'll come back to we come to we will come uh, to back to that one later on so let me create a, a couplet here let's just type a couplet right there and we want to create a couplet on top here just pick on that and make sure we create a couplet right there double click on it and before that try and enable the assembly double click on it here and uh, change this to circular couplet and uh, bring that to zero here just type zero here so that it flashes with the external side of our of our tube here now i'll pick i'll, I'll connect that just place one there so what we have at the bottom end here is is a closed member is is a chs with the couplet at the bottom and at, at the top i right click and redraw that come to navigate and what i'm going to do now we are going to populate this these rafters so i'm going to select on this individually select on this just first of all enable assembly select on that and select on this and select on this and that you don't select prior to invoking the polarity tool so in this particular case i'm going to uh, going to, to look for array tool here i'll double click on it here and i'm going to pick on the members i intend to array so i'll pick on that i'll press my control button and select on that and select on this and that's all I wanted. I'll press my mill button in the mouse and pick the the guiding point. I'll pick that as my first point. I'll pick that as my first point. Make sure you snap accurately in those position in, in those positions. So I'll snap on that. That position and move all the way to the opposite di uh, direction and snap on that spot. Come here and snap at this point as my third position so i press my mid button right click and come to that 
and we'll find ourselves in this uh, in this situation i'll click ok and come to navigate here and try to turn around this and this is what we have which is ok what we're going to do is very simple we'll redraw this and go ahead and do the same thing to this far end we'll select on this once we've done that come to navigate and rotate this so we'll do the same thing by coming here and picking on this as our main object to to be copied or to be arrayed and follow the same same process we'll def we'll snap on that spot we'll snap on that spot and move all the way to this far end here and and snap right there make sure you are your snapping is accurate so that you don't create a clash for other connections i click on that spot and press my middle button on the mouse and check whether i've created the best or, or the correct thing i'll click ok and uh, click on empty screen right click and come to redraw and come to navigate and check whether what i've done is correct this is what i this is where i intended to reach and let's come here and check whether this this has matched every every member and this connection has been created perfectly well so we'll go to we'll go to splice connections and uh, to use splice, co uh, splice connections we have to disable this uh, assembly so we deal with e every member individually now i'll come to splice i'll type splice here splice and i'll pick on splice here i'll come to that i'll pick on the, the, our previous splice settings i'll come here and click load i'll click modify or apply i want to connect that to that and i want to connect this to this and i want to connect that to that and this one to that one and this one to that so we just go ahead and create our connections as simple as this so if i come here if i come to navigate and rotate this we've created our splices and they are in place i'll click ok i'll come to navigate and rotate this remember these these members are welded to this chs have a look and this is how it looks we'll move step by step and you'll see how we move on thanks a lot for watching this channel and let's meet then and please take care because there's a deadly virus please keep distance of each other because you never know who has it and be careful be safe and be at home be safe let first of all let me uh, unhide or let me hide our conventional uh grid line here so that you, you see this clearly so this is what we have this is what you have and this is how it looks so if i double click here and change the view maybe to perspective you can see something you can have a different view of this this is how it looks from a distance so this is a skeleton structure of uh of a church and this is uh, a different design octagon octagonal so we'll have uh we'll have a floor we have a floor here a mezzanine floor here This is a very big church and this design is very nice it can house or it it can accommodate a, a huge number so thanks a lot and let's meet on the next presentation and bye bye thank you don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're new i'm Maurice dimba and bye bye